Hello, good day. Welcome to Go on the Run. And today, I want to go through a few things. Essentially, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing you the builder pattern. And this is one of many patterns that um, is in software development. And um, there's a way to adapt it in Go. And after seeing the builder pattern, I've seen it used years now in like uh, Java. And so I, I saw it a couple of weeks ago in Go. And then we did that video on configuration. I thought, hmm, maybe this builder pattern could be adapted for configuration. Um, I honestly can't say I've seen it used for configuration in Go, but I'm pretty sure if you look, you'll find somebody who've done it, okay? Because, you know, this is just a builder pattern. People know pattern. There are tons of patterns and people use them all the time. So I'm almost certain that someone else has done this. So how I'm going to show it, um, I've not seen it. Um, but if it happens to be the same way how other people have done it, then that's normal in software, okay? All right, so we're going to start off and I'm going to give you some references. So the builder pattern is essentially um, using Fluent interface. And the Fluent interface is sort of just a way of meta chaining and we'll talk about that. And I encourage you, I'll put this in the description below but I encourage you to go read all of this stuff, read about methods chaining and read about method cascading and then compare the two, okay? But I'll try and do my best to illustrate them. Um, and so also, uh, if you just search up Go patterns, you're gonna see multiple resources, but this one I think um, has a pretty clear article if you read the article on it. Um, in trying to find reference, I found this site but before I found example of the builder pattern. Um, and so that is what got me thinking about using the builder pattern for um, configuration. But, um, you know, I thought, I think this site is pretty good too in terms of how it explains stuff. Um, and then there's another example I'll put in the description of somebody showing how you could possibly use the builder pattern. Again, that's for configuration. And so maybe it makes sense there. Before we jump in, please do me a favor. If you're enjoying this material, you've been here before, please hit the subscribe button. If you're new, welcome. Thank you for giving me a chance. Take a look at the video and at the end of it, if you like it, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can know when I post new videos and definitely comment on the video. If you're a new user, let me know that you're new. Let me know what you think. And for you existing and returning viewers, Thank you very much for sticking around. And of course, do engage on the video. Like I said, that's one of the ways that the YouTube algorithm tries to uh, promote the videos if it sees engagement. Enough talking, this is already gonna be long, I think. So let's jump in. So I'm gonna start off by copying our previous project. And the reason why is because um, I actually want to reuse some of the code. And so what I'm going to do, I know that I'm going to change a few things here. Let me see, is go that mod. What is this called? Oh, episode five. Uh, definitely don't want that. So let's open our Visual Studio Code Editor. And so I'm going to call this mod episode six. All right, fine. That's okay. And then I'll close this. And so for episode uh, example one, I'm not going to start with this actually. I'm going to start with something else. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of essentially most of this stuff. And so here's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start by trying to illustrate for you what is a fluent API. So let's start there because like I said, the build pattern is just a way think of it how you build stuff. Um, if you know anything about pattern, um, object related patterns, well, it's just one of them there. There's, there's a bridge pattern, a singleton pattern, you know, um, factory pattern, all this other stuff. So bridge pattern, think of it, uh, the builder pattern, sorry, is just how do you build stuff? How do you construct things? If I give you a bunch of things, how do you construct? It's related to actually the factory pattern. All right. Um, so let me rename this directory here and I'm gonna call it AU for audio. And so the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm going to start off by giving you somewhat a different example. Let's just say that I wanted to um, implement audio players, right? Things that can play songs. And so I might have something that play AV files. That's an audio format. 
in video also um, MPEG 3 audio format FLAC audio format so all these different things that play audio but what I have in common is the ability to say let me in cue let's say my player my audio player allows me to not only play a song add a song but maybe my player allows me to in cue multiple songs or queue up multiple songs DQ or like remove a song and potentially get a list of songs okay so let's start with that so I'll say that I have uh, let's come up with an interface for audio player so I'm gonna say audio um, player interface okay and so audio player is something that allows you to say play a song okay whatever that song is stop playing that song uh, you know you could say pause if you like um, but of course, in order to play a song, unless I'm passing a song to it, but maybe what I want my player to be able to do is to have the list of songs that I can in queue. So I can say in queue, A I E N Q U E, -E in queue some song. And so I'm going to say song, pointer, um, and then song. Okay, and I'm going to do pointer. And then maybe I can DQ or remove a specific song from my list. And then maybe I want to see the list of songs that I have, right? So we can get songs or whatever, but I'll just call it Q since I started using the word in Q, DQ. Um, I could do add to playlist, remove from playlist, or just add, remove, and then get list or get all, something like that. And of course, when I go to um, get the list of song, you know, read the Q, it's going to be a slice of just song, okay? So what exactly is a song? A song is something that I can get maybe some metadata about the song, you know, who wrote it, when it was created, blah, 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 how long it is, all that stuff. And of course, possibly get some the bytes or the data for the song, um, for this song that I want to play. So I could say song is an interface and maybe it supports um, something like, you know, metadata, um, like get metadata or something like this or get info and allows you to, you know, get some metadata, song metadata, something like this. And this would be some struct contain a whole lot of information. Maybe another thing you can do is say data, and it's a method that returns a slice of bytes that represents the song, the actual thing that I'm gonna play, right? So something like that. So I'll leave this empty for now and just say that oh, we have some stuff there just because I want to move on and not spend too much time doing this. Okay, so now that we have our audio player, now that's our audio player interface. So let me change this to audio player. Okay, hopefully that's clear so far. So there we go. So let's save, get rid of that. So in terms of a specific audio player, maybe, maybe like I said, I could have FLAC or MP3. So I'm gonna do MP3 that player, let go. I'll put it in, for now I'll put it in the same package, but you know, package AU, come on. My editor is a little bit too helpful. And so maybe I have some type, and so I have, you know, MPEG3, um, let's call it MP3. Ah, uh, jeez, MP3 player, and it's some struct because this is a specific type now on which I want to implement um, those methods for an audio player. And so maybe what I have is the songs I want to play, and that's a slice of song, okay, something like that. And of course, I'll have to keep track of which song I have. I'm playing da da da. All that stuff I could keep current volume. All that stuff I could do, right? But let's just keep it simple like that. And um, now I need to play some very specific songs. Okay, so maybe what I have is an MPEG three song. Okay, and that is a struct. And you know, I'm gonna put detail in here for MPEG three song. Maybe the data is a slice of byte, for example. Um, and so if we think about, you know, for a song, 
We don't have an interface to, in, to implement because it's empty right now, but you could imagine like it was get data or get that information about the songs. And maybe when I go to create a song, I have some method that allow me to pass in and set and change, you know, the ID, the song and all these other things, or the um, singer and so on. So we'll ignore all of that. And so we're just going to focus here on for now the interface for our player. So let's go back to this audio player. And I'm going to cheat a little bit by copying this stuff, coming back here to player. And so I'll do this. I'll say funk. And then I'll say, let's say player. I don't know. Player star mp3 player. And then do that. And then if I go to the end of this guy, I do this, 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 and this. I can say like this. And maybe I can say log rust.info um, and, you know, whatever, um, play, for example, I don't know, mpeg3 play, whatever, something like this. So, okay, so the first one is play, this one is stop, this guy is pause. Um, this guy is at the playlist. This was removed from playlist. And this guy here is just get the playlist. And then of course, I'm gonna return player, you know, that song. Okay, something like that. Um, what's it complaining about? Uh, da -da -da -da. In queues on use. Okay, that's fine. It doesn't matter. Okay, so now that I have a simple player, um, I can go over here and now I can try to use it. So, for example, um, one of the things I might do is if I say au dot, um, if I do save and I do au dot, you can see I have song and mp3 song and blah 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 but I don't have any way to create an MP3 player. So maybe what I really need is funk new MP3 player, right? And it returns pointer to MP3 player. And so here, return a pointer, pointer to this MP3 player. Okay, so that's nice and dandy. And so we've sort of seen this sort of thing before, right? So player that you know colon equals au that new mp3 player and there we go and so now that I have a player I can say player that you know in queue a song to it and I can say song um, au that au that um, mp3 song and maybe like this and so I queue a couple of songs and then I can play them. And then I can also, when that's finished playing, it plays all the song in the queue, I could say stop, you know, something like that. Okay, and, and this totally works, right? Like um, it should work, but <laughs> um, I'm going like it should totally work when in fact um, I haven't tried it yet. And so if I do go build, build without an error and I run this ex and I should see that all things are added to the playlist and I play and I stop okay good go clean all right so that's all good um, but what is the fluent API really if you look you can see I have this object and I keep calling on this same object right over and over player wouldn't it be nice if I can do something like have this player return and then just chain these together so what i mean by that is uh let me get rid of this guy delete this so let's make another example with this we start off with something simple that we can all understand and agree on and then we enhance it so example two so let me close everything here and then for example two i'm going to ensure that i'm using the right package so Let's do it too. So what I'm saying is if we have the player, why do we need to even store it? Maybe we can even save ourselves the trouble by just doing this and then 
doing this bit and then doing like this right so that uh, what we have is let me open this a little bit uh, maybe I close this so what we have is this returns a player and then we call in queue in queue returns another player um, or the same player and then we can keep in queue and then return play and then it returns stop what would it take to be able to support an AP interface like this this is the fluent interface or you're going to see people call it meta chaining and like i say it's related also to cascading but they're different so what would it mean to implement it to support this in order to support this we have to go back to our ordered player and we have to see that this guy returns an audio player each one of these guys returns an audio player that's the only way we can get it to work and so you immediately see a problem audio player each one needs to return an audio player of course our queue or get a list of song cannot return an audio player we could move this to be a parameter like the right um function or method in go where you pass in a slice and then it fills it in with some data so we could take that approach but you know fluent api doesn't mean at all everything after return that so we're going to see when we do the builder the last call on that object generally returns something very different than what the previous calls were that's because at that point you've queued up all the thing that you need and then when you say build it's like oh create this thing now that you are giving you all this information and the thing that it would create would be very different than let's say the configuration that you keep returning and adding to so so this is okay we can still say we can still um support like if we go back here we can still support this without calling um in queue we could save the object still we could say player colon equal we can do that and then we can do this player and then we do all this stuff still and then if we need to get the list of things we can still do come on come on we can do still do player that q which gets the list of stuff right um and so you know we can still do that let, let me just assign it to that sort of thing um <laughs> right or actually i can do even better i can do for four underscore song you know or song you know, go like short names this and then we do something with it right use a song let me just spell it out right so you, you can totally do something like this right um all right so expected boolean uh, or range i need to put range see this is why this takes so long all right all right so our code still isn't compiled because these methods here don't return the type we want and so what we need is for each of these guys let's do it now there bam 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 each one of those to return the player and now oh we also need something else we also need them to say that they return a the player by going here 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 and here and say you return a pointer you know you return a pointer to mp so you return a player uh audio player and so since mp3 implements audio player this works fine okay because that's what our interface now says it returns our audio player so we have to have the same interface okie dokie so now in main we shouldn't have any error and so if we go now a build example two it should work so go build uh oh okay song declare but not use where is that uh, main 119 so where's song being declared and not being used oh in here so um let's use song somehow so i'll go underscore equals song and there we go now let's clean up 
Swedish building and example two. So we run this and you can see we still add to the playlist and we can play, we can get the playlist, right? So this Fluent API works. Now, now that we understand what a Fluent API is, um, now we can ask ourselves, can we use this for configuration, right? If you imagine that I want to, like what we were trying to do before, which was to be able to create a configuration for a database streamer before it can call it to do the work, you can imagine I could get new database config streamer and then do that with query, that with interval, that with database. At the end of it, I do that build is usually what you would do, get that object, and then now I can call that object to do the work, right? So essentially that is um, exactly what the builder API is. And so let's now convert this to Fluent and a builder. So we use the fact that fluent just means that you can just kind of call one thing after the other and or chain in, and then we'll turn it into a builder. So let's do that. Um, close this guy, close all these guys. I'm going to get rid of this, delete it, move it to trash. And then for example four, I'm gonna call this example four, no example three. And so let's go see if we can do the same thing. So here we are. This is the kind of object on which we wanna actually do the work, which the work I'm talking about here, this is the thing we really wanna be using, start and stop, right? Stream in data, this is how we're gonna get data, data to stream. All oh, this is just configuration. And so let's define then a builder that exposes these methods on it, right? So, you know, instead of this returning a config, it returns a builder. So let's define our builder. So our builder is a type. So we're gonna say builder um, is an interface with these methods on it. And so let's grab these methods here. Oh, and by the way, we know that all these things have to return a config. So why don't we just go ahead and change these guys one time, dab, dab, dab. And so we'll say close builder, this guy returns that. And so copy this, put it here in our builder interface. Next line, copy with query. So we have with database. Now we want with query. So bam, there we go. The next one we want is with output file. So copy that. And then I think the next one is with interval builder and we put that. And like I say, what you're going to see as a common theme with these is that at the end, after you don't configure it however you want, you want to say build. So you call the build method and the build method now this returns your target value, the end result, which is what you want, which is, in this case, we want a database streamer. Database, database streamer, config object. This is what we want at the end, okay? Up until then, we're just building up. <laughs> that seems like we overuse the term. We're building up until we have a valid database streamer, okay, to use. And we say build, that's gonna be the last method. And notice how this returns something very different than the previous. So once you call it build, you can no more add to this interface. Okay, so that's an to that value. So that's our interface. How do we implement it now? Well, we going to implement it twice and I'm gonna show you the easiest, most straightforward way and then I'll criticize it and implement it another way. We can, on this thing that has our configuration, we can implement these methods. So, now that we have, we need to add this as a receiver. So we need to have it as a receiver on this value. So on this type, so it's gonna be, um, let's call it database, let's call it config still. Config type database streamer config. And then we do that, All right? And so, cause we're gonna database streamer. Okay, I think I call it stream. Oh yeah, database stream. 
config. All right, so that's good. And so the reason I'm having that error is because here we were turning the wrong type. So when we have a config and I'm not gonna test for you know nil values or anything here, I'll get back to that in a bit. But here we do that and then we return the configuration, right? That should satisfy this once we have all the methods implemented. So we go here, it says it's complaining because I don't have all the methods implemented. So it says missing method. It doesn't tell you what's missing, but oh well. So we say config that query is equals to Q and then we return config. Here we do the same thing, config that um, destination equals this file name and then we return the config. Notice in this example, what I'm doing is updating the value and then return it. So that way when I change it, chain it, um, the previous value has um, the changes applied to it. And then the last one here, well, not the last one, but config that interval is equals to interval and then return config. And then the very last thing is I need that build method, right? Like if we go here, it's still gonna say method is missing. And that is because we have func. Um, let me just cheat a little bit and save myself a whole lot of typing. I'm well, not really that much typing. I'm gonna call this here build. It returns a pointer to database stream config. And so this guy now returns the final thing. Okay, now my users, in this example, I always returned a database stream config, but you know, it's not clear to the users that that's what I'm returning. It's only when I call bill, then it's clear that I'm returning a database stream config on which I can actually call, you know, start and stop. Up until then, this builder, builder interface, this builder value, they're only seeing these set of methods if they were to stop at any point and save any one of those values. Well, of course, um, config. So that's not an error anymore, so that's good. Um, I still need to be able to create a new builder. So what I usually would say, remember this doesn't take any of these parameters anymore. So the builder, usually when you're creating a builder, you just say new builder, and this just simply return a builder, All right? And then here, and then only when we have a full configuration, then we can print it out to see what we have when we do build. And then here we just do this. So I create a new convert. Notice this, I can still do my default value because I initialize this value and then I return it and everything should be right with the world. So let's see if this works. If I go back here and now I have a new streamer, of course I don't have error because remember my build method only returns the final value. So what I can say is new builder, that, that, and then I can get rid of these guys. There, 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 there. I can do that. And at the end of it all, I call that build. And this returns the actual value. Okay. So get rid of this. And notice I don't have any error, and this is example three. And so let's go back and do three. And let me make sure that all I am pulling in. Um, okay, I don't wanna pull in five or anything weird like this, so it's three. Yep, there we go. And now go here, clean up, go to build. Should build successfully, and then this, and then I should get Example three, and if I run it, you can see that how it is configured. 
So, okay, so this is working as expected. You know, we have one second and you can see that there and it is working still as expected. So what is the problem with this then? Well, regardless of any other issue you might have with the whole chaining of the calls this way, maybe it doesn't look too gold like to you. Let's say you have that issue. That doesn't really bother me. Um, maybe it's just a pattern that we haven't seen a lot in Go. Um, this is something that's common in, like I say, Java, even C++ had this. So in C++, you had something called, I think it was C out is um, the value for writing stuff out to the terminal. And the way you do it is you would send something like five, for example, to C out, but you can, um, use the this redirection operator multiple times so you can just chain things like this right and so um so this extraction i think is called the extraction operator returns itself so you can just keep calling on itself right um essentially when c plus plus has something like c out that that five it's really equivalent to c out that operator if I'm not mistaken, this five, like something like that. And so um, I haven't done C plus in a long time. And so keep chaining it is just the same thing. Operator, that, that, and then six or something. And so that's the same, exact same thing as doing something like this, okay? So this whole thing, a chaining thing has been around for a long time, but specifically we use in chaining now, meta chaining to say, we're gonna implement the builder pattern. Builder pattern is basically configure some stuff, da, 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 here are the things I need for the object I want you to build. Now that you have all the information, build it. And so this is the really the, the key that makes this a builder pattern is that in object change, you use um, the Fluent API or object chain, uh, meta chaining, and then you put build at the end to say, go ahead and do that thing, right? And you start off with like a new builder. Um, this gives you like a new object, right? Um, okay, so you see this still works. And like I said, the only downside I really think is um, what happened if this value is invalid? You know, you have an error here when you, the parameter that was passed in here. How do you know? You see in a language like Java, you can throw an exception. So you can wrap this whole thing. And if any at any point something is incorrect about how you configure it, where you throw an exception, you just catch it and you see. In Go, we don't really have exception. I mean, yeah, it's going to be too harsh, I think, to do a, um, you know, panic just because you don't like one parameter. So I don't think that's appropriate. So what we can do though, is we can still return like multiple values at the end. This is the last function, it doesn't stop us from returning multiple values. Well, how do we capture that there was an error much earlier? And remember, since these are functions, you could call them in any order. So you have to be able to somehow capture error in any one of these functions and then carry it through to the end. So that is the solution that I'm going to show you now that I think overcome this drawback of, you know, having an error occur earlier and not being able to capture it, okay? Um, we don't do it in this example, but let's do that. So let's go here and let's copy this. Let's paste it and enter and we do ex04. And so the first thing we really wanna be able to do is to be able to say that, hey, if there's an error building this thing, right? I wanna know about it. I wanna know that this thing wasn't built successfully. And so if error, you know, not equals nil, then, you know, log rust, let's say, panic in this case, or fatal, sorry, fatal, this error. Okay, so that's how we're gonna deal with that. But of course, what we need uh, wait a second, am I changing the right one? Which code? Oh, I'm still changing, I changed this on three. So let me copy this. I always make this mistake. Dot, 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 dot. Save. I don't want to change on any one of these, so close this. Example four, let's go here. Let's do that. Let's get rid of this executable. We don't want that executable. Careful when you're deleting stuff. Yeah, set executable three. Yeah, that's the one I want to delete. Okay. So, and then of course I want to change this from three to four to make sure it's picking up the right thing. 
Okay. All right, so now I've set up my main. Now I need my streamers to play nicely. So here I need this to say, I'm also going to return an error. And of course, since we're returning multiple values, we should enclose this this way. Now, when it comes to the build method, returning an error, let's go here. Build method return an error. How do we know if there's an error? We have to be able to be all on to something that carries any error that occurred previously. So by the time we get to the end, we can return that error. So the way I, again, I have not seen anyone do this. So if there's a better way to do it, please let me know if you've seen someone do it or you know of a better way or you can think of another way of doing it. What I think we should do is we have this interface that tells you how to configure the stuff. And the problem that we have right now is on the value that we want to use to do our work, which is um, database streamer. We have all these extra methods which have nothing to do with it. Like if somebody were to examine, let's go back to this running code. If somebody were to examine our DB streamer object, they would see all these extra in methods on there that have nothing to do with actually using the DB streamer. Like this is just to configure it. And it gives a false impression that you can do what? You can change the database at any time. And that's probably not what you want. Once you change the database and you configure it, that's done. You don't want to change the interval or update the interval, right? So especially once you start the database stream when it's running, you don't want to change the database that it's reading from or where it's writing to. So that's a little bit misleading. And so that's another downside, I think, to having that interface like this or implementing in it this way so we should separate those two values those two implementations and so because we need to separate these two implementation i think we need another value to on which to do the building on and so i can't think of another a better way of naming this stuff i'm just going to call it builder implementation okay builder implementation it's all hidden notice this is all hidden so struct builder implementation and this is on which we're going to implement these method and then we'll leave the configuration for implementing once you have a configuration now you can call stop and start on it so up until this point let's see from here dub 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 and then on the build receiver, so all these receivers, they should be builder implementation. That's, that's what they should do. That's what they should receive. And then they return a builder, of course, and that's enough. And then at the end, will the builder return a config? But here is the builder implementation it is basically have to store up all these values. So there are a number of ways you can do this. You can go back to what we had before, where we had a function that you could return that actually stores, and you know, it wraps what is storing the value. And then you queue it up in a hurry and then just iterate over the array and apply it. But I think one easy way of handling this is to simply say that I have a config that's pointed to the database config. This is the actual configuration I care about. And I'm going to remember the error if there's an error along the way. That's it, those two things. And then what we do is here, we just say our builder implementation, well, what we're gonna do is access, well, again, this stuff is not receiving the configuration, but rather it's receiving the builder implementation. So. I'm going to do this and that and I'm going to say is the builder implementation BI. Let's just do it again. Not very creative name here. Uh, if I do this and then I do this, this, I can say that all we have build implementation that config. That's what we're setting. And then what we're returning here. Bah, bah. Don't worry, I'm gonna go over the code with you before I finish. I'm returning, um, returning the build implementation. So, and for the config here, uh, for build, I am going to return 
builder information that config and builder information that error that those two things that's what i'm returning okay and then of course i can print this out build information at config build information that config that thing so okay so that's fine oh there i forgot the dot dot So all I did was nest or embed the configuration and an error within the builder implementation struct. This is on which I will use to implement this interface. I just embed those two things in there. And every time I call one of these functions, these methods, sorry, I update the appropriate configuration that I have embedded. And if there's an error with one of them, well, then I just well, I haven't done that yet, but I can update the error too. Now, this is where my, you might learn something new. So starting to go 13, I guess, there's this error that wrap, which is a percent %w when you, so you can create a new error this way and go. You can say errors that new, I just give it a, a string. So my new error, or you can do something like, FMT that error F and this allow you to give a string and add some more error. But the nice thing about this is that you can actually wrap errors using the percent %w. So you can wrap a previous error and then there's this old error that unwrap, errors that unwrap that allow you to get to nested errors because if you don't use error that uh, that w um percent %w to wrap the error, if you use something like this it actually just flattens it and you know you you lose our context so if you might have multiple if you have multiple error in the case of or fluid api here you know you're not going to be able to get those nested error so what we can do then is we can say if database is equals to nil for example that's an error so we can say bi that error is equals to fmt that error and we say database cannot be nil and then we can just wrap the previous error which is going to be bi that error and if bi that error at this point when this is called is nil there's no error yet this is the first error then there's nothing to wrap this is just going to be a nil value and we can sort of do the same shenanigans here we can say if you know query is equals to an empty string right we can say bi that error equals to fmt that error query string cannot be empty or invalid query string something like that and again we wrap the previous error so we don't get rid of the previous error we still keep it and chain and not really chain it chain it we're not chaining the errors we are um, nesting the errors so come on bi that error yeah, there we go. And of course you see the pattern already so we can do this or you can say if file name is equals to an empty string or whatever or condition for a file name um come on you get over there we can say that bi that error replace this error with a wrapped error so we go fmt that error and we go file name output file name cannot be empty all right and then percent w and again we grab the previous error and the last one is interval if there was some sort of interval that's too big or something we could test that right we can make sure that our interval is between some range and then we can test that now i'm not going to do this one because yeah, you know it doesn't matter right maybe interval is zero right so if we do if interval is equals to zero times time that duration da -da -da. time that duration zero if that's the case then invalid interval bi that error is equals to fmt that interval must be greater than zero right and then percent w 
and then again wrap the previous error if there was one again if there was a previous error wrapped it and so now what we can do oh and and at this point once you have an error condition you can just return right you, you don't have to continue right um we don't have an exception that we control to stop processing at this time and um but at least the user would know you know have all the errors that have occurred return bi so you didn't make any changes to the object if there's an error and so there we go and so dip, 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 dip. here is new builder again new builder returns a builder but it's not a configuration object it's actually a builder um implementation bi and so sorry if you heard that noise at my garage door squeaking and so builder implementation and ampersign and we can still do the same thing as we had before actually we can still have this and then say that oh we have um you know builder implement and then config and then that that copy that and um yeah it doesn't, i have to put this on a different line if i want it to show up like sensible but um this and then we can do what did i use here did i use a pointer yep i use a pointer so um for new I should use ampersand here. There we go. And so I return bi. And so no errors at this point. So let's go over it. Now from main, it nothing much changed. The only thing changed is that my build method here returns an error. I check that error. That's the only thing that changed, okay? For streamer, what changed was I created another value on which to implement this interface and I call it builder implement and I embed within it the configuration that I'll be building up on or right or the thing that I'm building. And then I also keep track of any error and those are going to be wrapped errors because um, I use the FMT error percent W to wrap any previous error. And so, of course, we don't need this anymore. And so, save. Um, I'm still being able to use defaults. And my methods, my functions that I had before, my config functions, they're now config methods on the builder implementation. And so, they can keep track of error and, of course, do all the same things that they were doing before. And so, anyway, let's go run this code. Um, so um, I think I finished reviewing it. Um, all this is going to be checked into the repo, so you don't have to worry about it. The only thing that's different is now we have this nested object that we have to configure. We give it our defaults of hand, just in case th the method is not called to override the appropriate value it has the default. And so let's go to example four. And I do go, let's clean up. Go build. No error so far. Taking a long time. Come on. I don't know why. And then we do example and we run it. And you can see, yeah, one second or default is five. And it's running the exact same way. We have our value, which is no surprise, right? Now, where there's an issue is if we were to make this zero we can have one an error there or if we were to say that um our database we call it with a nil database so if we call this with nil and then so that's two possible errors there and then here let's just assign database to you um, like this so we can get rid of that object 
and so now we should be able to throw a fatal error and we should see our two errors so again we clean up we do go build and we rerun it and you can see that um, we have the first value where we tried to wrap it was nil there was no um, error but then you can see interval must be called with a greater value greater than zero and the database cannot be nil and so at least you can get a pretty good idea of the order of things and that might help you maybe one error depends on another so when you wrap it this way you can kind of unwrap it and get to the thing so um, so this is this is really cool that um, you could get the whole thing so hopefully this um, you found this interesting so that's it I'm gonna cut it here um, before I go I'm gonna show you my patreon and um, digital currency wallet if you want to contribute that way again this material is posted for free and so we do enjoy it but if you're in a position to help support the channel uh, with a financial contribution please do um, and these here are some ways in which you can do that take care see you later bye stay safe